Welcome, everybody, to Hot Wheels Legends Tour 2021. This is our third U.S. and Canada stop. I am Jared Dienda. Really excited to be here and talk all things Hot Wheels. You know, we kicked this thing off just a few years ago, celebrating 50 years of Hot Wheels, and here we are. We have gone digital. Our footprint got larger, and we'll get into it where we get to define who is our Hot Wheels Legends Tour winner and will eventually be immortalized as a Hot Wheels diecast. So I'm Jared Dienda. I've announced car events all across the world and uh, kids' parties, bat mitzvah, all, all joking aside. But I announced many different things, including this Hot Wheels Legends Tour. And uh, it wouldn't be a Hot Wheels Legends if I didn't have my co-host. I'm going to bring her on in here. She does all things high fizz paint. Look at this. I'm so jealous right now of all the, the all the flair that our co-host, our driver, content creator, awesome, the smile meter creator as well, Colette Davis. Colette, what's up? Well, thanks, Jared, and what is up, everyone? I am Colette, and I am back at it again as your co-host for the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. I'm a pro driver, car builder, and content creator, and I am super excited because the Hot Wheels Legends Tour is officially back, and we're on an international hunt for the next fan-made custom Hot Wheels diecast car sourced from thousands of custom car entries. Now, this year, we are expanding to new countries and continents featuring countries from all around the world throughout our international tour. That is right. So, you know, uh, we might have closed submissions for this stop, but we have multiple stops after this. This is only the third U.S. and Canada stop. So we have more to, to, to unveil and just reveal because do you feel like your car could be a Hot Wheels Legends entry? Well, what you're going to want to do is go to hotwheels.com slash legends and submit your vehicle. Do people say, man, your car could be a Hot Wheels? Well, that's when you're going to go to hotwheels.com slash legends and submit your vehicle. And you know what? It very well might be a winner of a stop and then eventually go on to the finals. If you saw last year, it ended up at J Lo's garage with Fluffy and Snoop Dogg. We'll get to that in a little bit. But go ahead. You're not going to find out if you don't send it. Am I right, Colette? Yes, we want you. So builders and fans from around the world, we want you to register and compete for a chance to have your custom car creation immortalized as the next Hot Wheels 164 scale diecast model. In the end though, only one custom car will be inducted into the Hot Wheels Garage of Legends and immortalized as an official Hot Wheels diecast. All right, this is our third U.S. and Canada stop. So, uh, of course, I want to, this is presented by Mobile One. I want to thank our supporting sponsors, like I said, Mobile One and Mobile One Oil, also supported by that of Walmart, Dynacraft, Hot Wheels Bikes, and Hot Wheels Unleashed, and our media partner, Road and Track. So they are being represented here, and we're going to introduce our judges here in a little bit. But, uh, again, maybe break down the format here, Colette, because last year we had 20 cars. We've now narrowed down to 10. Yes, we did. So you guys submitted your cars and we chose 10 entries to feature today to look for who will be this round's Hot Wheels Legends winner. That's right. So again, the winner from this stop, this is number three of US and Canada. We had some international ones earlier on in the year and they will join as well. But we'll take the Legend stop winner from each round and they will all go to the finals in November at a location. TBD. That stands for to be determined. And like I said, last year we ended at Jay Leno's garage with Hot Wheels designers. We had some special guests. It was awesome. It was an absolute pleasure to just put an exclamation point on an awesome event. So we'll find out who will be immortalized as an iconic Hot Wheels diecast vehicle. So also just like last year, Mobile One has created the fan vote. But now we're opening up for 24 hours, not just moments. So we're going to take the runners up vehicles. And then we will submit them on Instagram and you, the fans, get to vote for 24 hours. Not only do they get to be the Hot Wheels Legends winner of the Mobile One fan vote of this round, but they will all go into a pool. All the Mobile One fan vote winners will go into a pool and the overall winner of all of those Mobile One fan votes will one of them will come out on top and join the Legend Stop winners. You follow me? I mean, regardless, some awesome cars are being created. Also, each winner of the Hot Wheels Legends uh, Mobile One fan vote receives a year supply of Mobile One. So, and the winner gets, I mean, that's 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 a great gift, right? I mean, you got a lot of cars, Colette. I don't, I don't know why they haven't thrown you some, some oil as well, but it's pretty sweet. I like the Mobile One fan vote. Yes, and so everyone knows throughout the entire show, I'm going to be with you guys 
in the chat, okay? So we want to know your opinion. Which builds are your favorite, and who do you think gets to be the winner tonight, or who do you really not like at all? Let us know. <laughs> and we'll see you guys right here in the chat. Wait, let's see. I think the chat is on this side or this side. Is it, is it next to one of you or below it's you? There. I'll see the chat. <laughs> it's there. Either left, right, up, down, sideways, slantways. I mean, we're into drifting, right? So, uh, yeah, it could be sideways as well. So, uh, again, Colette's going to be very busy being not only co-host, she's going to be chatting on the keyboard as well as she is a judge. So, And uh, she's also Mrs. Claus as well, even though it is June. So she's going to give it out some gifts, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So here's what's coming up. Here is our run of show. We're going to talk about our previous winners, previous years years as well as previous rounds here in the 2021 season we'll meet the judges we'll talk about the judging criteria how they're scrutinizing the 10 vehicles we'll see our featured submissions one through four you'll see our hot wheels collections i'm going to break down some of the awesome die casts as i'm kind of accumulating some for my kids that I, it's just very difficult for them to say let's open them up let's open them up. no these are collected you don't know. okay regardless we'll get to that die cast giveaways we have featured submissions five through seven more giveaways Submissions eight through 10. We'll get our judges three, two, one. That means their selections, one, two, and three. We have our Ryu Asada Award. I'm gonna grab this thing, get up in the camera because I gotta grab this. I love this award. It is the Ryu Asada Award, excellence in design and storytelling. You can see it right there, just out of frame. But uh, look at the, the skateboard in the back, the little K truck. I mean, that if that doesn't scream Ryu Asada, it, it literally says his name on the side, but we'll get into Ryu Asada and his uh, his legendary status. But again, we have the Mobile One fan vote, and then we have our Legends Tour round winner who wins this round, and exclamation point once again, Colette Davis will be giving out some more Hot Wheels diecast vehicles. So our friends at Mobile One are giving you a chance to win a Chevy Silverado 1500. Not talking about a 164th diecast, but a full-size custom trail boss yeah a full-size truck so all you need to do is text win to 73876 or click the link in the chat to enter into it now so no purchase necessary you go to legends tour sweeps.com i would do it i mean I, I, but i can't i legally can't so because hot wheels hires me so why not go ahead and enter you got some time on your hands is you can multitask there open another screen and go ahead and do that so before we meet our judges, let's dive into some Legends history and previous winners who are joining the Legends Garage, the Garage of Legends, and had their car made into a 164th diecast. All right, as we take a look back, oh, I'm, I'm seeing a little clicker down there. We'll get to that in a little bit as well. So this thing all kicked off in 2018 as we celebrated 50 years of Hot Wheels. I mean, just what an iconic brand. I mean, I don't want to tell you my age, but you could tell. These right here, yeah, I'm a little old, but just such an iconic brand all the tracks all the vehicles and in 2018 that's where we saw that man look at the smile on his face luis rodriguez his vehicle came out on top the two jet z you can actually just obviously you will know what engine is under the bonnet the hood the the, the wings or the wingless vehicle the two jet z had the two jz on this open wheeled creation that luis rodriguez took to the top then in 2019 we continued the party it all culminated at sema the SEMA show in Las Vegas, and the 2019 winner was the 57 Nash Metropolitan, built by Greg Salzillo. Now you can see it's got the drag parachute, has the dice intake, I mean, just the oversized wheels, the cutout fenders, and obviously his son riding with him and having one heck of a time. Uh, kids of all ages definitely love this thing. I saw it on the peg the other day, and, uh, and, and I actually bought one, but my kid wants to open it, but I was like, no, hold on, just don't open just yet. Then in 2020, just last year, things got shaken up a little bit. So we went digital. We went inside, but our footprint got larger. We had the Hoonigans involved kicking things off, and I had the pleasure of talking with Cody Walker. We have Paxton Booth, plenty of special guests, and the variety of vehicles is what I really liked. You know, and that's what Hot Wheels is all about. And we'll get to our criteria of authenticity, creativity, garage spirit. But we saw everything from Porsches to gassers to trucks, and we turned Colette even into a truck girl. And like I said earlier, we talked about the culmination of the 2020 season at Jay Leno's Garage. Yeah, we got to see our Hot Wheels designers alongside some special guests, including Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias, Snoop Dio Double G, the dog father, and it is the house that Jay built. So Jay Leno was there as well. But Riley Stairs' vehicle made Snoop jump for joy because that was our overall winner in 2020. And that is Riley Stairs' 1970 
Pontiac Trans Am. I love this thing. I mean, you can see the engine pushed back. This thing is begging to be driven, but it's also begging to be kind of just encapsulated and be immortalized as a Hot Wheel. It's actually getting scanned right now in El Segundo. So now moving on to 2021, these are stop winners. These aren't Legends winners. They have the opportunity to be in the Hot Wheels Garage of Legends, but the New Zealand winner, that 73 Mazda 616 Capella, and then here is the Aussie winner. And I mean, that just screams absolute Aussie. The 74 Ford Escort, the big arches, the big intake manifold, or excuse me, the blower, and then we went stateside. Here we are in uh, the US and Canada, the throttle stop finalist. That was a 68 Mercedes-Benz Gasser. And then our second stop with Dub Magazine was the 2020 Lulu. You might be scratching your head, but overall, I mean, that says Hot Wheels, and that's what we're looking for. A lot of people are out there saying, no, I don't know, my car, it just, no, we want to see your cars. Please submit. We want to see all the vehicles that you have, and that's why you are going to hotwheels.com slash legends, and we want to see your vehicles up here on the screen, telling everybody that, yeah, I am competing in the Hot Wheels Legends competition. All right. Now it's time to meet our judges. We'll kick things off with our two Hot Wheels designers. This gentleman joined us last year, and he's always ready for adventure right here. He's already packing up. He's ready to go just north from his Southern California home. He's excited. And don't, don't smile. Don't smile. There it is. All right, there it is. 27 years at Mattel, over 200 castings, uh, Volkswagen drag, but I mean, so many different things. 97, moved to the die cast team. But let's talk about your adventure man because I, i'm excited for you you're going to take the mountain bikes you're going where are you going now you're going on a vacation so it's actually 28 years now in uh, oh, okay, but who's keeping so, count? Uh, me <laughs> so anyways um no it's um we're going to oregon and we'll, i've got uh gonna get the jeep back tomorrow i had to have some of the work done so it's getting a lift and got my new tires and all kinds of suspension stuff so uh <clears throat> throw that up there and go go play on trails I love it. Everybody's ready to get out there and party. And speaking of party, how cool is it, this Hot Wheels Legends competition? I mean, this is just such a rad experience being an iconic company and brand like Hot Wheels and you guys doing this. Well, this is very cool for us. It's inspirational for us. You know, car shows are where we get a lot of our inspiration and, and um, this, this brings it right to us. So um, I love the fact that we get a lot of variety because in Hot Wheels, variety is king. So it's great stuff. I like it. I like it. Thank you so much. Phil Reelman joined us here. Next up, he's coming from one of the coolest backdrops I've seen there. Um, I'm just going to say it right out of the gate. Those, so those are your vehicles. And I'm going to ask you a question. Here. Those are all your vehicles behind you. Yes, I love correct. the shirt. I'm envious of the shirt. But uh, I think you, you being a Hot Wheels designer, you actually work on the packaging, which, like I talked about, on the pegs, on the posts, seeing the, seeing the vehicles, you have to kind of create this striking imagery behind the actual die cast. Yeah. And, you know, it's... Every, every package is kind of like a challenge, um, but it's a fun, you know, problem to solve to like make something that looks cool. You want to engage both kids and collectors. Like you want to make sure someone sees, you know, this on the peg and they're like, I, I need that. That's the one I want. So it's fun as, you know, best job in the world. Wow, look at that, Matt Gabe. I, I, I failed to mention your name, but you can see it right there, at Matt Gabe. Thank you so much for joining us, man, and uh, it's gotta be exciting for you. Again, you're at the Motoring Club there in Southern California. Great backdrop, thank you for joining us, Matt. Thank you. All right, moving right along, as uh, this gentleman calling from a remote destination might be a little glitchy sometimes. I'm just gonna prepare everybody, but he's excited. He's currently flowing properly, a little little streaming there, but uh, he is surrounded by a bunch of books, but he himself is uh, is part of media, part of Road and Track, that's, they are our media partner, but uh, you're actually working on a, a current article and a, and a whole story right now up there in Colorado, but Mark, what, and I understand you did watch uh, some drifting this weekend, but what do you think of this whole, ex let's call it an experiment or an event or just the whole concept of Hot Wheels Legends taking real cars and Honey, I Shrunk the vehicle. What do you think? It's the opposite of what we all did as kids. We would play with our Hot Wheels and look inside and imagine ourselves in there as you're going down the ramp and over the loop and off the edge of the mantle on the floor and irritating the dog. We all believed that we could do that somehow. And now it's reversed. And you have this professional cast of actual guys who get to play with Hot Wheels all day long, sitting there in El Segundo, designing cool things for our kids to play with. So it's kind of fun that I get to look at these and in a small way, help to pick next Hot Wheels. Uh, thank you. 
Oh, dude, our pleasure. And again, um, you've worked for multiple different magazines over the years. You grew up in Los Angeles. You went over to Europe. So you have a very storied background, no pun intended, being obviously, uh, you know, an author yourself. So thank you so much and a journalist. So thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Mark Vaughn, representing Road and Track. All right. Last but definitely not least, this gentleman joined us last year, has one of the coolest backdrops. Like I said, he just kind of got the floating head there, the floating hands. And it looks like uh, Mecca Lekka High, Mecca High Niho, if you can recall that uh, that reference there. But that was a deep cut. Started out as an editorial <laughs> intern uh, at another magazine, Detroit, Michigan. Moved his way up, and now he's official executive editor for Road and Track Magazine, Mr. Daniel Pun. Daniel, how's it going, man? It's going well. How are you doing, Jared? I'm fantastic, man. It, it's just <laughs> always – it's really fun because, admittedly, we kind of – get all the vehicles together and then we kind of throw I, I get to see them at the same time you guys do and you're like scratching your head what is going on here what what are your expectations looking at the 10 vehicles that have been selected for you to scrutinize what are your expectations well my expectations are pretty high to be honest i mean i did it last year as you mentioned and uh, we had 20 cars uh to choose from on that uh, particular occasion there were probably about 10 really, really good things and uh, five more uh, pretty good things. So I'm thinking that this is going to be the distilled essence of goodness. I like that. That's that's very well put. And I, I couldn't agree more. 20 vehicles, you know, you, you get some, but I feel like this is all thrill or no filler. And, and we're not talking about Bondo when you talk to filler. We're actually talking about, you know, it's it, it's going to be good. So I, uh, I I think it's great. So, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us here. And again, being one of our esteemed judges. Again, want to thank our partners. As our fans know, during each Virtual Legends stop, we drop limited edition Hot Wheels. Yeah, we drop them. So they disappear fast. So head over to hotwheels.com slash legends tour truck so again hotwheels.com slash legends tour truck we have a special drop for you you can choose from two special t-shirt bundles both featuring hot wheels legends tour exclusive so the 1983 chevy silverado diecast and a rad legends tour bandana if you haven't seen it already uh they are really cool so uh look at this look this is this is it right there that 83 chevy silverado and i know uh colette always goes for the pink and the high viz I love this thing. I haven't picked one of these up, but this one might be going home with me, as I always say that. I always threaten them. But uh, you can see the Legends logo on there. I mean, just adding to the tradition of Hot really? Wheels. So, really Colette, package. As, a, as, as, yeah. Oh, did you do this package, Matt? I sure did. Oh, look at you, man. So, they're, <laughs> they're, so I got to ask you. So, do you kind of have a, a stamp? You have kind of a standardized thing? I mean, yeah, you we literally do the illustrations and the art back there. We do, so we come up with one like background that we use for each year and then we change it out every year. So like at the beginning of the year, we'll kind of come up with a design and then the cars, we try to keep them all basically in one pose so that, you know, everything looks consistent on shelf, but. Got it. Yeah. I like it. So that front three quarter, that's that's kind of the look for here for 2021. I like it. No, look. that's awesome. I, and again, just there's so many different components that, you know, Diecast and, and Hot Wheels fans are, are looking at. So I appreciate the insight, Matt. Thank you so much for chiming in. All right, sure. Colette, I got to hand it over to you because, like I said, you're busy. You're working the keyboards. You're working the judging. You're working ghosting. And also, look, you're not busy enough. What about giveaways? What else you got? And we don't more than ever before, so we will have three giveaways throughout our entire show tonight. So these limited drops, they usually go really, really fast. But if you guys miss your chance to swipe one of the limited drops, don't freak out. Don't worry. I got you because I will be giving away two more of our limited edition Silverado diecast throughout the show and one more giveaway as well that you guys will find out about very shortly. So definitely stay tuned and I will see you guys in the chat. I like it. Thank you so much, Colette. So, all right, now we're changing, shifting gears in a different way. Collectibles, yes, but... Mattel is reimagining its physical toys as a unique piece of collectible digital art with the launch of Hot Wheels NFT Garage. Yeah, the Hot Wheels NFT Garage launches with three one-of-a-kind NFTs dubbed the first editions of the Hot Wheels NFT Garage. Mattel Creations will continue to express our brands in the NFT format as we launch new designs on MattelCreations.com throughout the year. 
The Hot Wheels NFT garage celebrates the brand's long-standing influence on automotive culture and massive appeal to collectors of all ages. With over 25,000 unique die-cast models, only a select few have earned the distinction of being inducted in the Hot Wheels garage of legends. I mean, this is a renowned collection of life-size Hot Wheels vehicles. And now, into the Hot Wheels NFT garage. Three cars in particular showcase the originality, authenticity, and garage spirit of Hot Wheels. We got the Bone Shaker. Diora 2 and Twin Mill, some of the most iconic vehicles in the Garage of Legends. And now through the Hot Wheels NFT Garage, brand and digital collectors can participate in an auction to own these exclusive cars in a completely new and authentic way. If you want to learn more about the Hot Wheels NFTs, join us in Clubhouse tomorrow at noon Pacific time. Where we'll have Hot Wheels collectors and designers discussing the future of digital collecting. Man. Just an absolute shift here in 2021. So uh, join Hot Wheels' own Brandon Vatuski, Andrew Chan, and collectors Rod Chong and Bruce Pascal. That will be 12 noon tomorrow on Clubhouse. We're talking the brand new debut. And you can see the NFT auction right there. That is the countdown. You got four days, 15 hours, 36 minutes, and 40, 39, 38 seconds. So the debut of something new, always innovating after 50 plus years. All right, let's talk about the judging criteria. Authenticity, creativity, garage spirit. That's what the criteria is. That's what our judges will be scrutinizing. Again, Phil, Matt, Mark, Daniel, and of course, Colette. I'm going to kick things off with authenticity. That's basically, like I said, you look at a car, you said, that is a Hot Wheels. That vehicle needs to be made. I want to own that vehicle. Just can't afford the real thing. So make it into a Hot Wheel and you can afford it. You can crash this one. It's not going to be a big deal. Like Mark said, you hit the dog or whatever you got. I mean, they're okay. I'm just saying you know those tracks and all those things but uh, authenticity i'm gonna throw it over to phil phil if you could wrap out about creativity and what does that mean when you guys are analyzing our our fleet of vehicles all right looks like we're on mute phil we want to hear everything you said i apologize but technology is our friend sometimes our enemy phil what do you got creativity sorry about that we've got dogs but anyways um We've made tens of thousands of unique vehicles over the 50 plus years that we've been doing Hot Wheels. So we're looking for things that add variety to our line and, uh, and um, give us that freshness that we're looking for. So we're looking for things that are unique and different to what we already have on the shelf. Uh, I'm, see I'm seeing the rent of the, the, the drawing behind you. Is that is that some of your original work or what's, what's going on there? Yes, that is uh, something I did, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Okay. I like it. That's, it's it's beautiful. I, I love it. And I, I, I love your office space. It's definitely inspiring. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Phil, in regards to creativity. Now I'm going to throw it over to Matt. Garage Spirit. You have a lot of Garage Spirit, literally and figuratively, behind you. But what does Garage Spirit, in your mind, mean when it comes to the judging criteria? Mr. Matt Gabe, over to you. So we have a, a phrase that we throw around a lot at the office back when we used to go to the office. Um, uh, built, <laughs> built, not bought. So, you know, we're looking for something that, you know, the builder, you know, put themselves into. It's not just like, oh, I bought, I bought this thing and just put it on the car and that's it. It's like, they actually got in there, customized it, made it their own. It's more like a work of art almost. Yeah. And there's also a lot of stories, you know, you, you, we've in the past, yeah. of uh, last year and earlier, just vehicles being put together in homage or celebration or uh yeah all those things so I, there's there's so yeah. many different components right yeah totally you know getting having you know a, ba a backstory definitely helps it's better than just yeah. like oh, i like blue so i made it blue it's like that's <laughs> everyone can have a blue car <laughs> right right but no I, your, I love your it. shade of blue is specific for a reason Exactly. It reminds me of the particular sky in San Diego or this or something or other thing. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Phil and Matt, on your insight in our judging criteria. All right. So let's talk about a brand new. Oh, man, this is awesome. You love video games. You love toys. Hot Wheels Unleashed. It is coming. Hot Wheels Unleashed is the new racing game that brings the fun of Hot Wheels to all consoles. We're talking about PlayStation 5, 4, Xbox Series, X, S, One, X, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. That's all of them, man. So September 30th, September 30th, put it on your calendar, 2021. This is Hot Wheels Unleashed. It has career mode for single player, online multiplayer, and on the couch. What does that mean? Well, it's split screen mode, which Colette and I got to play. Yeah, 
sorry, I, I understand Phil and Matt, we told you yesterday, but yeah, we got to play split screen mode, more than 60 legendary Hot Wheels cars that you can customize, more than 40 tracks, six environments. We revealed three environments so far. We have the garage, the skyscraper, and college. And now it's time to show you a new environment that brings me back to the fabulous 90s. Oh, yeah, I remember them. Yes, I am that old. So here's the skate park. The skate park is the stage with the biggest space available to unleash your creativity. So without further ado, let's take a look at the skate park. And there it is, Hot Wheels Unleashed. So check it out at hotwheelsunleashed.com to discover all the different game editions and pick up your favorite Hot Wheels Unleashed will be, excuse me, Hot Wheels Unleashed will be available for all major consoles and PCs in stores and retailers all over the world on September 30th. That's three zero. So pre-order Hot Wheels Unleashed now. So go to the website to get limited edition cars to race in the game. So why not? Just go do it just right now. Hotwheelsunleashed.com. I'm definitely going to do it because my kids are going to be psyched. And you know what? I, I know like our directors and our whole team over here, they they saw some of them saw it for the first time yesterday. They're like, whoa, that game's sick. Like, I want to play that. All right. Enough talking. Let's see our first submissions. Here we go in on into it. Thank you so much. Again, presented by Mobile One. Thank you to our partners, Walmart, Dynacraft Bikes, and Hot Wheels Unleashed. Oh, man, look at this hot rod. We are looking at a 1993 Sylvia S13. Hot Wheels got me into this hobby. This is Ashby Matthew from Oakland, Maryland. It says, Hot Wheels got me into this hobby. My love for cars, like many, started with magazines, Fast and Furious movies. Car was purchased at Driver Motorsports in Rutsburg, Virginia. Imported it from Japan. So... Am I seeing right-hand drive? I started compiling a list of parts, looking for unique one-off parts and hard to find. Over a few months of sourcing parts from all over the world, my vision was coming together. Build all started at the beginning of COVID-19 pandemic. Wow, look at that. So it's got the uh, you got the Rocket Bunny, the TRA, Kyoto 6666, 18-inch wheels. You got the G-Tech front suspension arms, ISR Pro, rear and upper controller. This thing looks JDM. I like it. I love it. Uh, I got to go to Colette. I, I just... I. I know she's building drift cars all the time. I like the color palette. I love white, and I think this is a good mix of color striking J. What do you think, Colette? I love this car so much. Imported fresh from Japan, and I just love the aesthetics of it. I think the colors come together perfectly. We got the nice wide body on there. And for me, like the only thing I really, really want to know more about is why. Like, where did he get the creativity from? Like, is this livery based off of some other car, a race car in Japan? Like, I just want to know more of the story because aesthetically, this is so my vibe. I love that he took the time to, you know, import even specialty parts for the car and he was patient with it until he got here to put it to Together. Um, but the guy definitely knows what he's doing. It's a really clean build. On the inside, it's kind of more like OEM plus. Um, but the outside, I love it. I'm a big fan. I just wish That's I awesome. More <laughs> and, I, and I knew you were going to hype it up. I knew you were going to love it. But there's another. <laughs> I think undercover drift fan that I got to throw to, and he's currently in Colorado. He watches all the drift events. Mark, I got to go to you. For, I got to go to you second. Mark Vaughn, what do you think of this uh, this setup right here in this S13? 
it's just way too clean. I expect to see the guy hit has hit the wall a couple times going around, you know, uh, in the prelims. I expect tire flex all over it. It's just so clean that I can't picture it as being an actual drift car. Has this car ever drift? I'm sure it has, but that it can. But when I look at it, and, and I must say, it's in my it's on my short list for my top three. Oh wow! I am a little prejudiced uh, in that regard that I I like the drifting stuff, uh, but. I yeah I I don't know I want to see it dirty and banged up. I like, like that. You're 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 like I don't want a trailer queen. I want to see that thing bang doors. I want to see zip ties. I want to see I want to see bubble gum holding together. Matt, I'm seeing you smile there. Do you like this thing? I I do like this thing, and I think there's there's enough drift cars that are zip tied together and look really. <laughs> ri when you go to the track and you see the ones that are really like putting in hours, like they're ratty. This thing is super clean. I love the colors. That purple and the like the turquoise just so nice the the purple kind of reminds me of like a brighter uh midnight purple and right. um the uh the wide body kit it's it's it looks so super sharp so i yeah. like it I, I i love wait hold on mark i'm getting a call ashby <laughs> says if you vote this thing and it wins he he will properly so it, it, they need to do a scan of it first and then if he wins then he'll just bang on it and then it'll beat it up but he's <laughs> he's got to first get it scanned where it looks nice and pretty so just fyi because I feel like this is built for show no because it's on it's either like air cups or bags but I mean he's if on, he's ripped it more power to him go for it I'm seeing for, I'm seeing fortune auto stickers on the corners so he's got he's What's got coil the worst thing could happen if you let an automotive journalist drive it <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah it's like I'm on the moon talking to you guys uh yeah this is a uh, space shuttle line calling uh, no, I know. I'm just gonna say, let the let an automotive journalist drive it after he wins. Okay, that's that'll be fine. What what's the worst that could happen? You know, all those years of work banged up in the corner while the automotive like journalist it. slinks off into his press car. And yeah. Says, all right, I'm out. Got it. AKA, AKA Mark <laughs> Vaughn shooting his shot right here to get the keys to that hot rod. <laughs> all right, move on to our next car. We'll catch up with our, our other judges here on on obviously some more vehicles. All right, next up, 1941 GMC truck. Yeah. Is a 1941 truck. Have you ever seen a 1941 truck jump like this? We got to see a little teaser of this yesterday, and it's blowing my mind. From Lake Forest, California, Tim, I apologize, I might butcher your last name, but it's, I believe it's Shedder, Shedderowitch, but I, all I want to say is Shredwitch. I feel like he's, he's a shred sandwich because this thing does burnouts. You can see the long travel suspension. This thing's sitting in a cul-de-sac. I believe it has a plate on it. So I'm just scratching my head. Literally on here, it says no bio. That's that. That's it. So I think actions speak louder than words. And that's exactly, look, I'm seeing a plate on it. Daniel, I'm seeing you shake your head. Uh, what, do you, what, what, do you, what do you think of the 1941 GMC truck? Daniel Pund representing Road and Track. I think it's, I think it's awesome. It's, it's one of my favorite so far. Well, so far there's only been two, but the ones I've seen uh, previously, I, I really, I really dig it. I love the juxtaposition between the sort of patina of the old, uh, of the old truck and uh, the, the, the new shocks and the, like the sort of high tech looking stuff, the great wheels. Um, it's a really cool build. And uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think it needs a whole bio. I think it pretty well speaks for itself. Yeah, I mean, you can see it's it's definitely raw, but I, I like, like you said, the patina next to the shiny, beautiful remote reservoir King racing shocks. Phil, what do you what do you think? You're an off road guy. You like you like Jeeps. You like all that. What's going through your mind looking at this? Yeah, just give me the keys and let me drive it. I, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love it. It's got it's got nothing on there that doesn't need to be on there, you know, and no, it's, it's just straight up build and uh, it's that trophy truck. It looks like a pretty serious trophy truck type style build. Um, so it looks like it'd be a blast to drive. I love the fact that they're, the trunk is full of necessary stuff. So you don't have to help neighbors move. Um, it's wonderful. <laughs> and and, and it's stepping on inside in the interior, I don't know if you see it. I believe it's got a digital dash. It looks like a MoTeC or something display, just a, a full electronic dash. So this is just such a good juxtaposition. And Daniel, that's one of my favorite words. And I, I love that because tube chassis, but it's giving you everything you need and nothing you don't. And also when you got a nice shiny car, like we saw from that S13 earlier of uh, Ashby Matthew, you feel bad banging on it. But I think that uh, that Tim, I'm going to call him Shredwitch. He's, he's 
creating a shred sandwich. Uh, that thing looks great. So, Matt, I see you shaking your head, but guess what? We're moving on. We're moving on. We're moving on to our next vehicle. We're moving on to car three. It's 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 hard. I get it. You 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 want to say stuff, but okay, Matt, what do you have? Matt, what do you want to say about that truck? Oh no, I was just gonna. I basically what everyone else said. I I love it. I I think the the patina is awesome, and it looks like you know if this one were to win, and we'd have to you know do a scan. I'd also like to borrow the keys from Phil and just take it around <laughs> the block or the state or the town. I don't know. <laughs> you guys are really shopping, uh, driving all these vehicles. That's that's not part of the judging process, but might sweeten the deal, I guess. And and are you putting your Venmo accounts up there as well? Is, is that what's going yeah. on? <laughs> 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 all right, let's move on to our next vehicle, car number three. And I've seen this vehicle in person. It is wild. From La Habra, California, this is John S. John S. in the 1955 S Club Gullwing Speedster. They say, we've created this car to thin air. This particular car did not exist because it's a bit of an amalgamation, right? It's, it's, they took a 300 SL gold wing body and chopped the top off and added a Porsche 356 Speedster windshield using a modern, modern AMG chassis and motor for the underpinnings. So it's a classic car with modern everything. I, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Matt. I, I feel like you know you're at the motoring club. I've seen this vehicle in person. The you know the blood red interior. You can see even under the hood, under that bonnet, it's got that that diamond stitching there. Matt, what do you think? I mean, so the color combo is beautiful. I love it. It makes me so sad to my core to lose the Gullwing aspect of a Gullwing, but it is it's it's amazing. And like you can tell that like. The amount of work that went into that was probably immense. So yeah, it's, pr it's very, yeah, it's, very pretty. It, <laughs> I, I think it's a bit of a flex, right? You're you're kind of bummed about the going, but it's like, pff, whatever, bro. We do we do what you want. Is that stacks of money out back? I, I believe that stacks of cash. <laughs> I think that is cash. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to uh, Mr. Daniel Pund. W what goes through your mind? Being the road and track, you know, editor, seeing this. I mean, is this an abomination in your mind, or you're like? thumbs up all the way yeah it's both it's absolutely both <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I gotta tell you if it, were, if it were a real gullwing body it would be an abomination because those things are just beautiful and perfect as they are but i mean this is obviously a recreation and, and uh you, you work with what you got there's some really cool details on it i love the uh side exit exhaust like uh old slr sterling moss style from back mm -hmm. in the day uh so you got a lot of the details right on this build yeah, it, it looks great. Uh, what I like about it is if it was a real gold wing, I couldn't fit in it. With the no top, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to look like Bowser. My, my head's going to be sticking out of the top like Grape Ape just pushing this thing down the road. Colette, I think you'd fit right in this thing, whipping this thing around Florida. Do you like the color combination? Because I know you always kind of default back to color. Kind of, I believe I do. what I'm seeing is I it's do. like a Nardi Gray. I love the color combo, and for someone that's not like super into classic cars, like I can't stop staring at this thing. I'm a huge fan, a huge fan of the all red, bright, obnoxious, in a good way, interior. And then if you look in the back, I'm pretty sure the air ride compressor is stitched and wrapped in leather. So come on, like every detail of this car has been thought out like the fabrication, everything is so good and top notch. I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan and I'm not a classic car girl and I this might be number one for me so far. Oh man, look at Colette shooting her shot. Look at, I mean, Mac, just the details, that, that being a Macintosh amp, that just says refinement. Cause if, you, if you're an audiophile, if you have uh, either home stereo or car stereo, you know that Macintosh is just kind of this, obscure kind of niche brand and they make some of the coolest turntables macintosh call me they're pretty sweet but i i i love i love those kind of details that that goes a long way for me so a great looking car i think we can all agree moving on to another vehicle that i i think this is really interesting car number four this is the z4 m coupe but not like any z4 m coupe you've seen before and this isn't the clown shoe. Remember the, 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 the M, the clown shoe car? This Look at this thing. What is going on? Let's walk it down. I'm a lifetime BMW fanatic, says Max Fisher from Richmond, Virginia, representing RVA. First modification was cutting out the rear hatch to create a trophy truck style spare tire setup. Car is painted, look at this, Harley Davidson satin black. So if it didn't get weirder, he paints it a motorcycle color. The car retains its stock 333 horsepower, S54 engine, six speed manual transmission. Safari style cars are here to stay. The Z4 M Coupe is the perfect platform. Perfect for sliding around in the dirt or cruising on the highway. 
Uh, I'm going to go to Mark because I think he could use this thing being out there in the middle of a uh, middle of Colorado and being an automotive journalist. You got to be like, this thing's perfect. I've been lucky enough to drive um, a couple of the Porsche 911s that have been converted this way and a few other cars. They're really fun. There's uh, our friend Emmy Hall has a Miata that's jacked up and has the big tires. Just the idea of taking a car like this and making it into something that's completely ridiculous, but also very much fun. I like that idea. I'm not against it. And the fact that it's a, an 07 Z4, those things, they're probably worth about what, nine? nine hundred dollars on the market i don't know <laughs> so you might as well chop it up and get creative with it so no, i really M. i really like the fact that that he did this execution <laughs> but i gotta say that a, a drive in it would really help uh sway me yeah oh my gosh mark everything just give me the keys look at this guy all right uh you, I'm you can turn, you... that too i'll throw my throw my name in there you know yeah i mean i want to drive this thing again i just don't think i could fit in it but i i, I like the whole concept of i really like the safari movement i i think that all of us will agree the juxtaposition of of builds and what's going down either it be at sema show or car shows and i i think it's really great i'm gonna throw it to phil again just another off-road enthusiast uh I, I think this car looks really cool make sure you're off mute there phil and then we'll go ahead and wrap out what do you think so for a bmw guy to uh go off out of the box in this way is a pretty courageous step i think i think it's um i think it's awesome i think it's cool um i really like it's it's kind of got the old safari uh you know soul at the core but it's got contemporary uh, interpretation of it so it's a lot of fun and it'd be a blast to drive that thing down some dirt roads and just hang the tail out and have fun and Phil, we keep talking about driving, experiencing. How does this transfer into a 164th Hot Wheels diecast? Because that's that's what it really comes down to. That's what we're talking about. We can scrutinize it like you know, like Daniel and Mark as journalists, but as Hot Wheels designers, and that's the end goal here is creating a Hot Wheels diecast. Will this transition and transfer and be you know perceived as as a cool Hot Wheels? You know, it's it's a it's a different take on a on an already cool car, and it's got a lot of visual entertainment uh, for both adults and kids, and I think it'd make a great Hot Wheels car. Yeah, I, I, I mean, outside of the outside of the black, who's who's trying to mean outside of the black, real quick. Uh, I, I think if you had maybe maybe some cool livery on it, maybe some stripes, maybe a number. I, I think maybe that would kind of make it pop as far as deco in the uh, diecast yeah. world that, uh, that I've learned, but uh, somebody else is chiming in there. Okay. Anybody? I was, I was going to say, if we did that as a Hot Wheels car, we probably, it's already like a 10. We would crank it to 11, probably make the wheels even a little bit more like exaggerated. And then yeah, some, some kind of cool uh, deco, even if it was just like a black on black deco, like extra stuff yeah. would be super cool. That'd be cool. And uh, Daniel, I feel like this car would suit you very well in your bat cave with the <laughs> bat D4 safari. This is just like, uh, right? It's like those uh, those those billionaire trillionaires that they just wear black t-shirts because it just eliminates any decision in their mind. That's black. Me too. Uh, oddly, that is also me. Uh, no, that car, is, that car is cool. And I love that it's not a Porsche. I love seeing safari stuff that's not, uh, that's not expected, uh, yeah. which the Porsche stuff is starting to be, cool as they are. Um, yeah, I love it. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So uh, we saw our first four vehicles and now it's a time for, of course, it wouldn't be Hot Wheels Legends Tour without Walmart. Walmart, our partner since the beginning of Legends Tour, if you're watching this from the U.S., head to walmart.com slash Hot Wheels to build your own bundle with exclusive products, including the Hot Wheels edition. Oh, where's it at? I'm looking for it. I'm looking for the right one. I believe it's around here somewhere. We're looking for the macho truck, but uh, the macho power wagon plus special products from our sponsors mobile one and dyna craft so go to walmart.com slash hot wheels build your own bundle including the hot wheels 1980 dodge macho power wagon and our friends in canada head to walmart.ca slash hot wheels for legendary deals and like i said you can see that right here the nft auction going down four days 15 hours 13 minutes and 38 seconds our nft auction and those are there's only one. There's only one of three vehicles. Like I said, Diora, Bone Shaker, Twin Mill, NFT, making some history going down in just a little bit. So again, thank you to Hot Wheels for their support. Can't wait to see people 
you know, at, 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 uh, at Walmart locations and seeing them. So if you're tuning in just now, you are watching our View From Home Hot Wheels Legends Tour. I'm Jared Dienda, and this is our third stop of the U.S. and Canada Hot Wheels Legends Tour here in 2021. We kick things off in New Zealand, Australia, now on our third stop presented by Mobile One. And we are, like I said, Mobile One, our partners, our media partners, Road and Track Magazine. Special thanks to our sponsor, Walmart. You, the fans, submitted your vehicles, 10 submissions to look at who will be this round's Hot Wheels Legends winner. Let's take a look at our run of show, what, what we're going to be seeing as we continue on with this party. I'm going to break down some Hot Wheels collections vehicles here. Diecast giveaway. Colette is uh, Mrs. Claus all the way over there in warm Florida. Featured submissions five through seven. Diecast giveaway. All right, another one. Man, we are just stacked up here. Featured submissions eight through ten. Judges top three. The Rio Asada Award will be announced right here. The Rio Asada Award. Excellence in design and storytelling. And then we have our Mobile One feature. Legends Tour round winner and eventually another diecast giveaway so a lot of things to see our friends at mobile one again are giving away a full-size truck talking about a chevy silverado 1500 trail boss custom go ahead and text win to 73876 or you could go to legendstoursweeps.com and enter no purchase necessary so again go and do it pull your phone out text win to 73876 or legendstoursweeps.com now to enter well, another family member of the Hot Wheels family, this gentleman joined us at the finale and has joined us every stop last year. He was at Jay Leno's garage, so I'm going to introduce him as I throw it over to a raving Hot Wheels fan, Mr. Paxton Booth. Paxton, over to you, buddy. Hey, guys, what is going on? I am super stoked to be back at another stop on the Legends Tour. And if you are a Hot Wheels collector like me, then I have something super rad to show you. Check it out, guys! It is the Hot Wheels 2021 Challenge Accepted Collections Poster. It features every single one of the main lines for 2021. And if you actually look below every single car, there's a place to check if you want the car, and there's a place to check when you finally get it. I mean, how satisfying is that? This 2021 poster features the 50 new models that are being created throughout the year and the mini collections those vehicles are in. One of my favorite new for 2021 models that I'm still on the hunt for is the Porsche 935 with the famous 277 Urban Outlaw paint job. And another one of the really cool new for 2021 models is the 2019 Legends Tour winner, the Nash. I was fortunate enough to actually see this car in person multiple times and so when I brought this car home and checked it off my poster, it was definitely satisfying. Before I give it back to Jared, I want to talk about the new for 2021 mini collections. There is the J Imports, which showcases the best of the Japanese domestic market, otherwise known as JDM. The Hot Wheels Drift, which focuses on the best drifting cars. Hot Wheels Torque, that has cars that have a need for speed and powerful engines. And my favorite of the new mini collections, Mattel Games. It is a collaboration with Mattel sister brands. And that is where you will find this guy, this 32 Ford with an Uno Deco on it. I mean, how rad is this? You can also find our long-standing fan favorite mini collections, such as Hot Wheels Exotics, Muscle Mania, and Factory Fresh. But I think my favorite car on the entire poster is actually the Barbie Dream Camper. Why? Because I think of all of the Barbie fans who have only ever played with Barbies and have never picked up a Hot Wheel before and had that experience. So I think this model right here can open up a whole new world for a lot of people. So as you can tell, 2021 is going to continue to be awesome. Good luck to all of the contestants on the show. And back to you, Jared. Right on. Thank you so much, Paxton. Love your enthusiasm. Love 
your just affinity for collecting Hot Wheels and obviously all your knowledge. And hopefully we'll see you at the grand finale once again here. Hot Wheels Legends Tour 2021. Hopefully you're telling everybody, tune in. We're live, baby. We are live. So like my brother, Jason Deanna, shout out to my bro. He just texts me, says he's watching. So love you, bro. And, uh, and see you soon here as we celebrate 4th of July in just a little bit. But I got to bring up that Barbie Hot Wheel. Uh, I'm going to give you one guess. One guess who would love that Barbie Hot Wheels uh, I think Mark. I think Mark. Go, going over to you, Mark. I think you'd absolutely love it. I'm joking. Colette Davis. Colette, I know you are just drooling all over that Barbie Hot Wheel. I don't know what. I, I have no idea what gave it away. It wasn't the Barbie pink. It wasn't. You have Barbie graphics on the side of a vehicle, but you love that thing. And I have my Barbie camper on the way. So, you know, I already copped one. I ordered it. It is heading to me right now. And speaking of uh, Hot Wheels for what might be winning tonight, you know, what, what do people want to win our Legends Tour tonight to potentially be turned into a Hot Wheels? I'm trying to keep up with the chat online. So, you guys, reminder, I'm in the chat right now on the Hot Wheels Facebook page. We've gone through only four of our entrants tonight, and I'm trying to figure out what vehicle is the favorite right now, and I keep getting different answers. Every, like, and I am already tied between the first four of what my favorite is, and it looks like everyone keeps saying different things, whether they like the Spisa the most, or the truck, or the Sylvia. So please stay engaged in the chat here, because we want to know your opinion throughout our entire show. And like I hinted to earlier, I'm going to be doing some giveaways and the first one is right now. So thank you guys so much for joining in and participating in this legends round. Now today we're going to be doing some giveaways and I'm not just giving away one die cast right now. I'm for the first time ever giving away an entire Hot Wheels collection, not one, but five cars. So all you have to do is let me know in the chat, on the Facebook for Hot Wheels on our live stream right now. Let me know what is your all time favorite Hot Wheels. That is it. Let me know in the chat what is your favorite Hot Wheels of all time. I'm going to be keeping an eye on all of your answers. And when we come back, I will pick a winner. But for now, Jared, tell them about the collection that one lucky winner will be getting. That is right. Today we have the British Horsepower Collection. And we're not talking about polo practice here. We're not talking about tea and crumpets. We're talking about horses. Horsepower. These edition, as ever, arrive in full metal glory and sporting real riders' wheels. We kick things off with an iconic vehicle, the McLaren F1 GTR. If you're a fan of endurance racing, you may recognize the livery on this McLaren from a certain 24-hour event. The real deal vehicle, center drive vehicle, the McLaren F1 GTR. That is the first of five of this British horsepower collection. Next up, the Morris Mini. You love it. Could never fit in one, just like I said, but the Morris Mini sporting a racing style livery with the 850 on the door to flag it as a beloved model of this very well-mannered speedster. Look at that thing. Look at that up close and personal. All right. Uh, hey, Matt, did you do the did you do the graphics on these or is this, is this somebody else? No, I actually, I didn't get to do those ones. Uh, those are Gosh. done by Julian Coyles, a very talented guy. He does all of the uh, car culture stuff. Nice, nice. I like it. And again, just I, I love all these cool details that I'm even learning along the way. There's so many different pieces of the puzzle. Next up, we have the Jaguar Lightweight E-Type. She has its own racing pedigree. This version bears more than a passing resemblance to the one that won the 1963 Australian GT Championship. Get that one up close and personal. Again, some great artwork there. And this is all five of this British horsepower collection. Moving right along, the Lotus Esprit S1. Love the lines of this vehicle, which not only launched a nearly three decade series of high performance sports cars, but the S1 itself played a supporting role in a James Bond movie. Guess what? It also went underwater. It was a submarine as well. So the Lotus Esprit S1. And probably, I'm just gonna say it, my favorite car in this collection. Of course, I love a McLaren uh, F1 GTR, but I have such a soft spot for Land Rovers and old school Land Rovers. The Defender 110 hardtop is in the mix. So not only on-road, but off-road as well. Horsepower, these things don't have a lot of it, but this thing, 
I mean, come on. That is such a cool car. And uh, I've seen some of the special edition ones uh, of the of the uh, Land Rover Defender, but this one is really cool. So skip your high tea and savories and pick these right up. I'm adding to my collection. I have, uh, I I'm adding to it every day. And like I said, I keep them high on my shelf for my, for my seven year old. So he, he doesn't crack into them. So go to Walmart, go to walmart.com, walmart.ca for those incredible die cast vehicles. Check them out. Colette, I, I know, I know it's hard. I know it's, I know it's very hard. To I know. Choose just one, right? I, I know. I, I hate to put the pressure on you, but guess what? I'm twisting the screws, Colette. You got to give the, you got to give this collection away. I know I have to pick someone. There's so many good answers. I'm having a really hard time, but <laughs> I think our winner for this collection is going to be Samantha Montoya. She says my all time favorite Hot Wheels in the whole entire world is the Fast and Furious edition of Suki's Honda S2000, which is one of my favorites too. So like congratulations to Samantha. You just won the British Horsepower Hot Wheels collection. So one uh, of us will be messaging you very shortly to get your info to send over your new collection. So congrats again. And if you didn't win this giveaway, don't sweat it. This is not the only one. I got two more coming up, so make sure you're paying attention. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, did did I? Sh I haven't shown you the trophy yet. This is the trophy for every single Hot Wheels Legends Tour stop. I mean, the Twin Mill design in El Segundo, California. This is the trophy. Again, only so many are given out last year and now this year. That is the Hot Wheels Legends trophy. Hot Wheels Legends presented by Mobile One, supported by Walmart, Dynacraft Bicycles, and Hot Wheels Unleashed. NFTs coming out. Let's move on to our next vehicles. Judges, you ready? I need to hear you get hyped. Yee! Yes. Bill, Mark, Matt, Colette, Daniel. Daniel, relax. Daniel, <laughs> you are just, uh, just a ball of energy. I can't even look at you. It's like looking at a solar eclipse. You just can't look at it straight on. Otherwise, you'll go blind. You just can't do it. Daniel is like a beacon of light. <laughs> That's right. Or the asset. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Thank, thanks, thanks for playing along, Daniel. I really, really appreciate that. Yeah, no Just uh, again. All right, all right. Moving on to our next vehicles here. We're going to go through five through seven. Go and hit him with it. Here we are. Car number five, 1969 Daytona Charger Superboard. Superbird. Easy for me to say. I got a little excited there. I feel like it's a Harlequin Superbird which is the Harlequin Volkswagen, right? I see you shaking your head, Matt. What if some good old boys from Alabama decided to take on the 24 Hours Le Mans? Well, what car would they take? It's the basic genesis behind this build. Every car has a backstory, and they call this the Scrap Tona, the coolest junkyard Mopar ever seen. Powered by Richard Petty Racing NASCAR engine, R5 P7 making 740 at 8,300 RPMs. Christopher Palmer from Macomb, Michigan. Oh my goodness. Wow, I, I don't even know where to begin, <laughs> but I love it. I think it is so sick. Daniel, I see you smiling. I, like I go to you on this on this going Mercedes and now I go to you on the scrap Tona. What do you think? <laughs> I, I'm absolutely in love with this. And the thing is that is about 10 miles from my house and it's oh, wearing really? plate. So it can be driven on the road. Um, I think it's awesome. It's terrifying looking. I'm sure it's terrifying to drive. It's not weather tight. It's like a rusty nail. It looks like a pile of billboards. It's incredible. <laughs> it's so cool. Like yeah. uh, we, we talked about driving it. It brings a smile to your face because because again, we, we've talked about this so much in this episode and, and, and in past, but I feel like more so in this episode, just the cool juxtaposition of what's going on. I love the wheels even, just the gold with the big hoops. I normally don't like modern wheels, but it has that, that kind of old truck wheel look, but refined and, and you could see the brakes there. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to Phil. Phil, I gotta go to you, just as far as applying this to a Hot Wheels. The deco in itself is sick. But then just the whole setup, the stance, the overall look. Phil, what do you think? I think this would be powerful uh, Hot Wheels if we could fit it in the package. I think, <laughs> I, love, I think, I, you know, I'm, I, I really love this car. And uh, the Deco would be extremely challenging, especially for our basic line. But uh, I think we'd try to see if we could figure it out. There's a lot of color breaks and, and all that kind of stuff, which make it pretty challenging. And uh, yeah, no, I, I really like this car. 
I mean, I'm putting up the two Jet Z right now, and you can see it right there. I mean, that's that's you know that's our first winner in 2018. But uh, you know, did a different deco livery and a full size scale. But um, I don't know. Raise your hands if you want to say anything about this car. I feel like Matt, Mark, and Colette. It's it's a disservice if we don't bring it up. Matt, go ahead. I see you put your hand up first. Matt, go to you. So the first thing I saw obviously was the paint and all how hobbled together it looked, and it was like that's insane. And then when I found out that it had a NASCAR engine in it, that's like mind blowing. But it, it really reminds me of a, there's a Johnny Cash song called One Piece at a Time, where it's like, oh, I love that this, song. yeah, there's like this guy that works in a, a car factory and he smuggles out all the pieces and then Cadillac. builds a crazy car. That was like my first thought when I saw it. It's, that's I love it. <laughs> that's such a great analogy. And I'm sure the owners, again, Christopher Palmer and his boys, the Scrap Tona, I think they could absolutely agree. Mark, I, I gotta go to you, man. It's looking a little more, you mentioned that it was built to race at Le Mans. It looks like it would really do well at Lemons, which is a similar series to Le Mans, not quite on fire. If this thing performed where near as well as it looks like it should, just based on all the stuff into it, the engine, that wing, like if that wing actually performs any function whatsoever and, and maybe pushes the car down, you know, if any of this stuff works like it looks like it might, it's got to be a fantastic car. But again, I don't know how uh, Mattel would be able to do all those different kinds of paint. Uh, maybe they could. I'm out. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I, I think it's fantastic. And I, I saw this thing uh, just moments before we kind of came on. I said, whoa, I, I love it. All right, enough about this vehicle. Again, congratulations, Colette. We'll get to you on the next vehicle because uh, here we go. You're not a pickup truck gal, but this one might change your mind here. This one's really interesting. So it's a 55, 58 Chevy pickup built by Tommy Wren in Santa Rosa, California. Tommy spent most of his childhood hanging with his dad in the garage in 1997. He purchased a 1955 Chevy pickup. The truck, unfortunately, was T-boned in the intersection as a total loss per the insurance company, so a fresh start was needed. Whoa, look at that. Oh, I didn't get to see that just yet. Again, vision and dream was finally achieved with the truck winning every show it's attended since completion. The Pinnacle was winning first place for the most radical custom at 2019 Sacramento Autorama. This truck continues to turn heads and grab your attention, dedicates this truck to his dad, who unfortunately passed away in 2020, and to his wife, who puts up with him. So Tommy <laughs> Wren is saying, you know what? I build this thing. I love it. Suicide doors. And the, the, the photo that I got of it, does not do its service when you swing around the backside even with the custom pop out all of that colette what's going through your mind when you see this because it's a bit of a low low it's a bit of a hot rod it's kind of again another amalgamation another juxtaposition colette i swear i'm turning into a truck girl i don't know what to me but i i love this thing i also like the story that it was kind of born from the ashes in a sense since it was a complete write-off it was total from being hit and they didn't let them slow that down they reimagined the entire thing to create what we're seeing today the amount of custom fabric that goes into a build like this is insane and if we go back to the interior there, I didn't even see this before, but there are so many details in the interior that you just don't see in a lot of builds. Like I think all of the airbrushing as well, there's like sticker bombs in the bottom too. Just every part of this build is so immaculate and I can just, I can really appreciate it. Now, I don't know from like shrinking it down to 164th scale, maybe head over to the designers. Has this style and being mostly red already been done before? Like, will you be able to capture how unique it is when it's that small? Um, I don't know, but for the build, it's amazing. Yeah, and you took the words of my mouth. That's that was going to go to Phil on this one again. 20, 28 years now, uh, but who's keeping count? Like you said, he is. But taking a look <laughs> at this, you'd have to absolutely break the mold to make this. I'm trying to decipher. Is it Shaveri Low? I think is the kind of the, the Chevrolet, but it's Chevrolet low, I believe. But Phil, going to you, breaking the mold. I think he's trying to pronounce it Chevrolet low. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's that's what it says in the write up. Anyways, okay, um, anyways, I think this is this. He's done so much custom work on this. I mean, he's he's uh, he's gone and hunt, hunted and gathered all kinds of different parts to put on this. I think he's got a 55 Chevy dash. He's got a 58 Chevy bumper in the front and he's taking the front and putting it back and flipped it over. I mean, he's got a ton of, of uh, he must have spent years gathering parts for this thing because there's a lot of different stuff on it. I think it's very easy to make this look different from everything from 
from all the other 50 pickup trucks we've done because it's so customized. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it'd be very, very easy to make it look unique because it does yeah. look so unique. Yeah, the, the deco. Way. Yeah, the deco and what's in the you know in the truck bed that's shortened. It's slanted. It's got the skirts on it. it it's got so many different things. Daniel, were you just crying? Are, are you crying right now? <laughs> I mean, do you, do you like I, it that much? I was much? weeping. I was weeping. Just one, one tear. One tear. Uh, you know, I do like it. Uh, I don't know how it would be as a as a Hot Wheels, uh, as we sort of discussed. Maybe shrunk down. You miss some of those details. Like, would you be able to show a, a clock replacing one of the headlights in the front? which is on this thing, or the one gold uh, upright part of the grill uh, among all of the other chrome pieces. It's, uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. Yeah, no, it, it yeah. definitely is. I see you, Matt, going, uh, yeah. It, and to Colette's point too, does it, does it transfer into 164th, Matt? I think, I think it could. I think the, the extreme slant of like the bed and the cab and like the front end, you know, when you shrink that down, like I said, with the, the Z4, you kind of crank it up a little bit more, make it a little more extreme and having the, the, the rear tires be basically totally hidden because like, the side profile of this car looks sharp. Um, yeah. It looks like it's moving without even moving. It's I think it's yeah. really nice. Yeah, it's it's very, very interesting. All right, let's move on to our next vehicle here. Car number seven from uh, is it? Puyallup, Washington, Puyallup, Puyallup, Washington. David Dennis drives a, or built a 1974 Ford Mercury Capri XSE manufactured in Cologne, Germany. So look at this. You could, I mean, one striking right out of the gate. It's got that, uh, the Testarossa type side fins and box fender flares. Then it sat in his garage for 25 years uh, with his priority taking over. This was in the late 80s. He parked it for multiple years for 25. And then in 2014, at 54 years old, he finally got back to turning his high school car, customizing drawings into reality to complete the vision he had for his Capri back when he was 16 years old. So he's owned the car since he was 16 years old, and here he is at 54 years old in 2014. So it's obviously, do the math there, uh, you know, 60, 60 plus years old now as David Dennis and this 1974 Ford Mercury Capri XSE is sitting here in front of us. Mark, what 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 do you say? What do you have to say about this very unique vehicle? I mean, the 74 Capri is is interesting vehicle as it is, but putting a little Testarossa <laughs> flare on it and the box flares. Well, I gotta say, when I saw the the car on the list, it said Capri. I thought of, of course, the 90s Capri, and I'm relieved. Got front wheel drive 90s capri so <laughs> that's the first thing going for uh the second thing is uh i remember these cars and at the time if you didn't want a mustang and you wanted to pretend that you were, had a european flare you got a capri because you got a v6 engine rear drive and you could be really cool this application uh, uh i know how it's supposed to really exaggerated proportion features and colors and things like this it sat in the garage for eight years maybe it could sit for another Oh, that's the first scathing. That's the first scathing uh, verdict right there, Daniel. I see you're even disgusted by this one, but, uh, Matt. <laughs> well, Daniel, what do you? Any 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 answer response to that? Uh, to Mark, no, absolutely not. To the car, yeah. I mean, look, this thing is like it's like a tour of the decades. You know, it's like I feel like it's the Rosetta Stone of this guy. It's. <laughs> It's every era. There's like a there's like a, a 70s or 80s uh, Porsche Gol or a, a whale tail. You've got the Ferrari Testarossa strakes. There's like disco lights inside. It's a crazy, crazy vehicle. But like, you know, obviously this is this is how this guy developed, and this is this is the dream. So, I mean, more power to him. Exactly, more power to him. Exactly, Matt. What do you is, say? Isn't it like oh, sorry, if this isn't garage spirit like i don't know what is this build went over 45 years like he grew up playing with hot wheels being inspired by it at 16 years old and now 45 years later completed this build and it's so wild like i'm a huge fan i love the whale tail i love the test rose accents on the side there's just so much going on but the colors he chose and the palette he put together it all works and online it looks like the chat thinks the same thing we got best so far has a cool story and game over this one so oh wow look at that i don't know is this I, it I, I i don't know i mean i think you know 
I like I liked what you said as far as Garage Spirit. Yes, one thousand percent. Compared to even all the other builds, I think. The wheels are my only complaint. Sorry, I just had to put that out there. I just <laughs> no. Had to put that out there. <laughs> I think my only complaint, and and I do like again the box flares and all the things. I, I again the '80s vents out back, the whale tail. It's crazy. The big thing for me are the Testarossa sides because you saw Fierrosas, right? You saw people take Fierros and and make them into Testarossa. You saw those those fins, and it's like. Those only can live on the Testarossa. You put it anywhere else and you're like, oh. I don't know, Jared. I don't know. Like, honestly, I was just about to say, seeing them on this build makes me want to be like, oh, can I put that on one of my builds? I, wouldn't, I just wouldn't have thought. Like, Colette, delete my number. Colette, delete my no, number. I'm, <laughs> I'm putting it on one of my drift cars and it's going to happen now because I just, oh, I just like it. It makes the car look so much more aggressive and just like, hmm. I don't know. All joking, I'll, I'll, all joking I'll, aside. I'll, I'll, I'd love to love every car, but I like how Mark said, and that was his honest opinion, and that's what it is for. You could say that every car, everybody wins, participation trophy, but I like uh, I like a scathing review, so I appreciate it. Matt, sorry, not enough time for you. We'll get to you on the next one, bud. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I love I love the kind of polarity that that vehicle brought. I, I think it's I think it's very healthy. And Daniel, even face, he's like the emoji yeah. with the <laughs> just Daniel keeping it keeping it rock solid. All right, let's talk about our Hot Wheels bikes by Dynacraft. If you haven't seen these things, these are so cool. My very own son, T-Bone, and his homegirl, Lola, got to ride these bikes right here. The Dynacraft Hot Wheels bikes in 16-inch and 12 inches. Vibrant blue frame adorned with custom Hot Wheels graphics and bright orange, silver, and black details. That's my son and Lola You're ripping around. The sturdy BMX frame is built to last all-terrain tires so your young riders can race comfortably down the sidewalks and it has a rear coaster brake to provide safe stops you know it doesn't have the handbrake it has the coaster brake so you just back pedal and it comes to a halt there you go the 12 inch comes with removable and adjustable training wheels and will allow your young rider to progress and grow at their own pace with as much or as little assistance as they need our solid rear coaster brake keeps stopping simple and safe for any new rider riders will also love the hot wheels rev grip which makes the bike sound like a real motor bike Twist the Hot Wheels Rev Grip Noisemaker, and your little racer can crank up the volume with realistic engine sounds. These Dynacraft Hot Wheels bikes with Rev Grip are sure to provide years of fun to young riders. There it is, the Rev Grip. You just get it going. Vroom, vroom. Exclusively sold at Walmart. Thank you to Dynacraft and the Hot Wheels Dynacraft bikes. All right, we're keeping it going here. We've seen how many was that? Oh my goodness, we've already seen seven vehicles here at the Hot Wheels Legends Tour stop number three, representing U.S. and Canada, presented by Mobile One. Speaking of Mobile One, we have our special guest, courtesy of Mobile One, this gentleman. Talk about going fast. Here we have J.R. Todd, NHRA, funny car driver, representing Mobile One. Hey, thanks, Jared. It's J.R. Todd, driving the DHL Toyota Camry, the 2018 NHRA Funny Car Champion. Our car is based off a, uh, a Toyota Camry, and we get a lot of support from Toyota and, and, and TRD. 500 cubic inch is the, the maximum that we can have, and it's all, all aftermarket parts and pieces. We produce our own cylinder heads at Coletta Motorsports. You know, one thing that, that we brought in in the last uh, two years has been a uh, mobile one we've noticed by switching to, to the mobile one oil that uh the oil is so much better that, that it, it lives on the parts that uh that parts aren't breaking like they were in the past that was the goal to uh to be a world champion someday and to uh to pull it off like that that uh that, that was unbelievable. It was kind of a, a storybook season for us, and it's one I'll never forget. And uh, hopefully, like I said, we can pull off some of that magic again uh, here soon. Thank you to Hot Wheels and Mobile One for having me on this Legends Tour stop. I just want to say good luck to all the contestants out there. Oh, man. Thank you to Mobile One. Good luck to you, JR Todd, as, again, representing Mobile One with Mobile One running through the veins of that hot 11,000 horsepower talk about giving the keys mark i am not giving you the keys daniel no colette you're not going anywhere near that thing matt your shirt is too fancy for it and phil yeah no you're, you're an off-road guy just stick to the off-road but uh thank you to mobile one for their presenting sponsorship all right guys it's time to do another giveaway this time colette go ahead if you will all right, it is giveaway time again. This time, though, one lucky fan is going to get an exclusive 1983 Chevy Silverado. So make sure you are ready. 
on the keyboard, ready in the Hot Wheels Facebook page live stream. I'm gonna ask you a question and we just need you to answer in the chat. So all you have to do is tell me, what is your favorite build so far of our tour for this stop? So we've shown you a few builds throughout the show. Let us know right now, what is your favorite one so far? I'm gonna keep an eye on the chat and then we'll be picking a winner very shortly. Well, guess what? Because you're actually going to see all the cars because we're going to go through our final submissions and then you get to choose the winner. So that's what's cool is, again, let Colette know in the chat which one is your favorite vehicle because we're about to go into our final three vehicles, eight through ten. So here we go. Moving right along. Oh, man. You're not a you're not a truck girl. You're not. A, have you ever been a smart car girl, gal or guy? So here's our next vehicle. This is a 2009 Smart 4-2 smart runner what look at that it is a again 2009 smart car took a bone stock smart car and turned it into a life-size hot wheel off-road adventure toy car look at i got the winch got the led lights oh man smart runner has custom one-off long travel suspension featuring fox reservoir shocks and coilovers one-off chromoly front a-arms and house machine billet aluminum rear radius rods ryan rutledge from bring spring texas uh, hats off to you for just creating something like this. And what's interesting here is, you know, the wheels, the tires, all that. You think like throw some shocks on it. You need to retrofit some things. So you, you need to modify. You can't just throw some suspension on it and do this. And that thing was ripping as well. Phil, I'm, I'm seeing you grab your chin in, in disbelief or is that just why or how? What, what's your questions? Finally, a smart car for the U.S. market. <laughs> um, yes. I, 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 I love the quirkiness of this. I, I, it looks like a pretty, like he's really thought through the build and engineered it well. Uh, it looks like it'd be a lot of fun. I think it's kind of a, a, a nice little upgrade from uh, side by side, you know, it probably has air conditioning maybe, I don't know. But anyways, I, I, I really like the quirkiness of this and uh, it, it's unexpected if I could borrow Daniel's term. Um, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go to the other Hot Wheels designer, Matt. I cut you off earlier and didn't get a chance to talk. And uh, I think this thing, threw, threw a wild paint job on it, and you're going to be ripping around L.A., bro. Oh, 100%. It's, uh, so the designer definitely has or must have a great sense of humor because, like, you just look at it, and it's like, that's silly. I love it. Uh, probably a blast to drive. And kind of like Phil said, like, you people will actually see you when you're driving that car because you'll be at the same height as them. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Daniel, uh, you, you said you you live you know in Michigan. I I could see you absolutely ripping this thing through the snow, through the sleet, and and you could you don't even need to parallel park it. You just back it up to the curb. Yeah, you pretty much could, uh, or you could just tip over uh, into the <laughs> curb. Uh, like the stability is a uh, is a little suspect on this thing. And look, it's it's super silly. I'm sure it makes everyone who sees it smile, and that's awesome. But what's amazing is how high quality that build is and how thoughtful it is. It's sort of shocking. Uh, so hats off to this guy. That's that is a great point, right? You just like you said, the novelty of it's one thing because we've seen vehicles in the past that are just kind of you know kind of maybe bubblegum welds or done this. Not that it's not great quality, but safety needs to be a priority as well. And you saw that thing absolutely ripped down the road. And remember, Ryan Rutledge lives in Texas. So he's, you know, he's got some open land that he's going to rip around. You can even see the the big windmill back out back there. So very cool car, the Smart Runner. Let's move on to our next vehicle here. Now, there is one element of this vehicle that is I've never seen before. And to be quite honest, we're all talking about it prior to going live here, and I got to bring it up right out of the gate. Rod Nielsen from Abbotsford, British Columbia. He's in Canada, right out of the gate. The rear custom twin rim wheels are a tire setup that's very unique, having two tires on one wheel that share the same air. Almost everything on the car is custom. That right out of the gate, I'm like, what the heck? I bought this car over a decade ago, sat on it, deciding what I was gonna do with it, wanting to make something really special. He said, I was lucky enough to find a shell of one and set out to make the craziest one in the world. It has won several awards at SEMA show and has been featured in magazines around the world. Rod Nielsen, I know you're watching, you're hoping your car gets made. I've never seen a twin wheel 164th Hot Wheels die cast, but Mark, you're an automotive journalist. You've seen a lot of cars. 
you're out in the middle of nowhere in Colorado. You're surrounded by books. Is there any knowledge that you could drop on us about this twin rim wheel? Well, if you look back in history, the pre-war Audi Grand Prix cars uh, had the had these twin wheels on them because at the time the tire technology wasn't up to uh, spec to where you could have a big wide tire like they have in Formula One now. So there's a historic precedent for this and, and it actually works in that way. So I'm thinking that this guy is making a tribute. Oh, no, wait, I'm looking on the inside. He's not making a tribute to the uh, Audi <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, I wish there was a way that you could see more clearly those those dual wheels because there had to be a lot of work to go into them. And if they're sharing the same air, they have to be connected pneumatically. So a lot of technology going on there, but I I don't know. It's it's not working for me. But here, you know, in LA, you see these. You actually see these actual cars, the R100s and and RX2s and 3s yeah. on the street still. And they, they look really cool stock. And so to take it from that nice shape as a stock car, do stuff to it, you're taking a lot of risks. Let's just say yeah. that. Yeah, I, I think I think it's really cool. I like the gold and the white. Um, you know, most people go black and gold. I like the white and the gold contrast, the box flares. Colette, I know you're a rotary gal. You're, you're clamoring at the bit. What do you think? It's more road race. It's, it's funky. It's unique. I don't even know how to really define it as far as style-wise. What do you think? I mean, hands off to just what it took to make this build a reality. I mean, all the custom work, the fabrication. I didn't even know about the twin wheel situation in the rear. Like that is amazing hats off to them my my only thing i just don't like the wide body as much i don't know if it just kind of looks like loaded a bit instead of like really defined with some nicer crisper lines at least in the rear um i do like the aesthetics on the front of the car but the wide body just isn't really my taste in particular but hats off to the build um i mean and Rotary Girl, I got to give him some points for that. And I think you can just see the transmission sitting in there. So that's uh, pretty wild. And he actually drives it. So, you know, this isn't some garage princess. You know, this is a build that's been built crazy and actually performed. So, so much respect for me in that department. Um, maybe I'll change my mind if I get to drive it and review it in person. Oh so. gosh, here we go. Another, <laughs> another, give me the keys. Another, give me the keys. Off. Uh, FYI, and I, and I see that line right there when it's coming straight at you, that just like not even a three quarter angle. It's like a half. It's a, like a weird, it's very bulbousy that you bring up a really good point. Um, it's got, you know, it's got, a, it's got big hips and it's got big front. It's got a, a bit of a bullfrog there. It's a but sauna. You know what, the rear, the rear's hidden in the smoke. So you know what, if you're doing yeah. a fat burnout or whatever, we'll just, we'll, we'll hide the rear a little bit. <laughs> And, uh, and Phil, Phil, what do you think of this vehicle? Again, overall, just it look it being a Hot Wheel, being a Hot Wheels diecast. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely creative. It's definitely unexpected, and it's uh, it's it's a cool car. Um, I think um, I, I would I would have thought Colette would have loved this because you got a dually Mazda. It's it's the conversion <laughs> of those two worlds. So, anyways, um, I think it's I think it's cool. I think it'd make a cool um, a, a cool Hot Wheels. Okay, awesome. I like it. All right, speaking of Hot Wheels, let's keep it going with our final submission, our Hot Wheels Legends Tour. Here is our final submission, the 1969 Volkswagen Bug Truck. Now, uh, taking a look at this, it's Damien Aylesworth from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, a beautiful part of the country, says, quote, I started this build many years ago, back in 2010, took a pause. So again, another garage spirit that's coming to life. Once my life settled, I started back in 2017. So that's a seven year hiatus and then took two years, finishing in 2019. My vision was to turn it into a pickup truck. After searching, I discovered that a 1949 Chevy three window pickup had similar body lines and I can make it work. I did all the fabrication work myself, chop, channel, and section, and I built the engine and did it all. So hats off to Damien Aylesworth from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Love the matching intake manifold, modern, you know, modern engine, love the wrap. It looks built on purpose. The turned green, I like that when you step inside, has kind of some old school, you know, you can see the suspension up there. Uh, I'm gonna go to Daniel. Daniel Pun, what do you what do you make of this 69 Volkswagen bug truck, you know, thing? I I love it. I, I you know I feel like I've said that a lot uh, tonight. But there's been some good stuff, and and this might just be my favorite. I absolutely love the color. I love the front end. 
I love the exhaust from the Atlas V8, popping out the, the front wheel wells, uh, wrapped like that. The whole thing works for me. It's just awesome. The lines are really interesting, right? Because that bug, and then it gets extended out, but in the back, the shortened truck bed, it's just got the oversized tires. I, 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 I agree with you. And what's really cool is it's very well done. Back to your point about that smart runner. This is really well executed. You could see it's it's intentional. It, it's it's fun, but it's refined. The the color matching. I, I like the muted color. It's not flashy. It's not. It doesn't have big graphics because the lines on it. Phil, this has got to be inspiring as a Hot Wheels designer. You've never seen anything like this. Yeah, I really love the simplicity of this. And, and again, it's one of those cars, there's nothing there. It doesn't need to be there. And it's just all form follows function. I love the way you fit that engine and exhaust and frame all together and made it all work together. It just is this piece of art up front there. Yeah, um, I want to so, get- and, and I love the way he handled the back end of the, the, the cab there and the five window effect. So it's yeah, very cool. It, it, and you got to think just stability wise sorry to cut you off there phil but it's just stability wise that cage and and look at inside i mean that's that's a great set of monkey bars that extends all the way through the the cab into the back so stability wise safety wise that thing's rigid i mean that that that's a that's a go-kart with some massive meat hooks out back um matt going to you i think this would make obviously a really cool piece of artwork on the on the peg on the on the blister and behind the blister I do, I do not disagree. And you know, like all those swaps are kind of like a dime a dozen, but this one was done like so nicely and the color matched really sets it off. I don't love the uh, the turned green metal stuff inside. Like I feel like that green is just so jarring from like the nice subtle uh, outer color, but I, I love, and I, I'm not positive. It looks like the doors were like cut and extended. Like they look a little longer than they're supposed to be. Um, and I, I guess my only other critique was like, I wish there were more louvers on the hood just like all the way back okay i like that that's that's a really great point and uh, i'm just going to round the horn here because uh i believe mark uh, i don't think you've wrapped out about it and colette but mark first please well the thing is in southern california car culture since the 60s there's been this long tradition of customizing volkswagen beetles because you could get one really cheap and you were only limited by the creativity and the stuff you found in your garage and so even given that long history and tradition this is unique and it stands out it's completely different from all these other guys uh those is uh, you've kind of seen that before on one or two of them but you've never seen a pickup bed added and the way the the sheet metal and the glass curves around the cab like a, an old uh, chevy apache truck uh it's it's never been done before so i i think this guy uh, should get some props for this yeah, most definitely. And then Colette, finally, uh, I, I, again, we've talked about trucks. I don't think we've talked much about bugs, but a, a bug truck. Yeah, I mean, this to me is like the minimalist hot rod. Okay, I, I actually like it. There's nothing there that doesn't need to be there. I will agree, though, with Matt that the the green on the interior and the firewall and the bay is kind of throwing me off. Like, I think it would have been cool if it was maybe like a maybe a copper or something or a slightly darker version of the color on the exterior. Um, that's the only thing throwing me off. I think it's really well executed and definitely unique. So I like awesome. it. Awesome. I like it. And I appreciate the feedback. What's cool about that is that I don't think that would transfer over to a 164th Hot Wheels die cast. So that's what's cool. Sometimes like, oh, the deco is awesome, but that wouldn't transfer interior. Not so big of an issue that that green could yeah. easily get eliminated and turned into something else. So, all right, Colette. I see you uh, looking at your keyboard, or not your keyboard, but your screen, and you're tapping your keyboard away here. Uh, time to pick a winner. Yeah, so I know in the chat we are still getting answers for the giveaway, but it is time now to pick a winner. It was very hard, but the winner is Nick Kearns. And his answer for his favorite build so far was a Scrap Tona, because it is definitely his favorite, and he absolutely loves big wing cars. So Nick Kearns, uh, one of our team will be reaching out to you so you can receive your 83 Silverado diecast. Congrats to you. And don't worry if you didn't win this giveaway, we still got one more at the very end of our show. So be sure to stick around and stay in the chat. Awesome, look at this. The gifts just keep on coming. Thank you so much, Colette. And thank you. We saw all 10 cars. The question is who's gonna be the winner? Who's gonna be the mobile one fan favorite? And who is going to visit 
the one, the only HotWheelsUnleashed.com. Because let's talk about Hot Wheels Racing Game once again. That brings the fun of Hot Wheels gameplay on all modern consoles and PCs. Hot Wheels Unleashed. It will be released on September 30th, 2021. More than 60 legendary Hot Wheels cars, more than 40 tracks in six different environments. It will have single player mode, multiplayer mode, online and split screen. And we know this, right? Right, Colette? On couch, split screen mode made very, made very well because we played it. We even we had a little, little Hot Wheels Unleashed gameplay. D did you enjoy it? We got the preview of Sneak Peek and it was pretty epic. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Just, just all the different vehicles, all the variety, and uh, it just—it's kind of an amalgamation, just like the vehicles that all the Hot Wheels diecasts are. It, it, it gets blended together like this video game. None other than Colette and myself. Tell me in the comments who do you think won? FYI, I'm the one on the right in the boom car, and Colette is in the 24 hours on the left. So watch this. This is the split screen mode where we got a preview so again i'm on the left colette's on the right and take a look at this gameplay so you can actually sit next to your opponent and compete or you go online so again look at this breaking away little drifting action so you can get a whole party going on track and look at the different elements there you know you get some speed you go around the corners you're drifting around and just like you're piloting a 164th hot wheels die cast and you get to choose from all these different vehicles um I, I'm looking forward to the progression just of this game as well. Out of the gate, I, I'm I'm excited to see. Oh, ah. <laughs> right, like when we got both got stuck in the web. When you least expect it, it just gets you. Right, and uh, and it's it's just like it's just like being a little Hot Wheels yourself and ripping around in all the different environments. As as we talked about earlier, debuting the brand new skate park. Which environment are you excited about? Again, we got the college, we got the skate park, we got kind of the traditional track. Wh which one are you excited about, Colette? I mean, I love this one, and I feel like I might have just been trying to drift the whole time, and then we got to <laughs> each other and play little bumper carts, but you know, it's all, it's all fair. It's all fair, so uh, I, ha I had to do what I had to do, you know? <laughs> exactly. No, exactly, and it's fun. Those The spider webs, all the different elements, and just trying to navigate through this, but it, it's all about having fun, and I think this is a game for all ages. Again, playing next to your opponent, playing online with uh, with somebody else, just the dueling match or the whole party mode. Uh, it's it's going to make for a good time. And if you go to HotWheelsUnleashed.com, again, down when it comes out, we're talking about then in September 30th. So if you go to HotWheelsUnleashed.com to discover all the different game editions and pick up your favorite Hot Wheel. So as a Hot Wheel, excuse me, as as the Hot Wheels Unleashed game we got to experience up close and in person. This will be available for all major consoles and PCs in digital stores and retailers all over the world September 30th. So you're gonna wanna head to hotwheelsunleashed.com to discover all the different editions. Pre-order it now to get limited edition cars for the game. All right, to catch you up, you are watching Hot Wheels Legends Tour presented by Mobile One, also support from Walmart, Dynacraft, and Hot Wheels Unleashed, where 10 vehicles are submitted, and we only one could be this stop winner, and we'll receive this trophy right here, the Diora 2 Hot Wheels Legends Tour presented by Mobile One. All right, let's take a look at the run of show. Just a few more items to tick off, and we'll find out who our winner is overall. We'll find out our judges' top three. Find out our judges' top three. We'll get the Ryu Asada Award announced where our judges, our two Hot Wheels designers, pick who receives the Ryu Asada Award, Excellence in Design and Storytelling. Then we have our Mobile One feature, Legends Tour Round winner, find out who wins this stop, and Colette will be giving away some more gifts. So as I said earlier, our friends at Mobile One are giving you a chance to win a Chevy Silverado 1500 Custom Trail Boss. All you have to do is text WIN to 73876 or click the link in the chat to enter your info. No purchase necessary. Nope. None at all. So go to legendstoursweeps.com now or text WIN to 73876. All right, let's take a quick glance back at these vehicles. Won't go into great depth, but just to remind you, not too long ago, I mean, we kicked this thing off just about an hour and a half ago. Kick things off. I, I, I feel like I forgot, but we were talking about Mark was scrutinizing, says, give me the keys. Talking about S13s. We're talking about on road, off road cleanliness, juxtaposition, maybe chopping up a goal wing. BMW Safari cars. It's it's about paint. 
It's about creativity. It's about authenticity. It's about garage spirit. And I think tonight it really showed up. I am absolutely thoroughly impressed with not only our judges scrutinizing them and uh, and Mark giving a scathing review of of the uh, the Capri, but also of <laughs> I'm kidding, uh, but also just the diversity. That's what it's really about. Just celebrating the automotive culture and then just shrinking it down to that 164th Hot Wheels diecast, like our first ever winner in 2018, that two Jet Z right there. All right, creativity, authenticity, garage spirit. I'm going to kick things off with our Hot Wheels designers. Phil Realman, senior designer of Hot Wheels, give me your three, two, one. And again, where, where it was, car one through 10, what vehicle, mm -hmm. and just a, a, a little quip on why you like it. Go for it, Phil. So number three will be number four, the uh, 2007 BMW Z4 Coupe. I love the, the unexpected quality of this um, and I love Safari stuff. And uh, it's just a really cool car. I think it'd make a fun Hot Wheels. Definitely agree. All right, your second pick. So my second pick would be number three, the 55 S Club Gullwing Speedster. I, I, just it's, it's a beautiful car. I mean, what can you say? It's it's really cool. It'd make a great Hot Wheels. I love the fact that no real Gullwings were harmed in the building of this car. Um, and it's just cool. It's just cool. All right. Didn't clip any wings. And your number one, Mr. Phil Realman. Realman. So my number one is the number two uh, 1941 GMC truck. I just think uh, that would really add some variety to our line. I don't think we quite have anything quite like that. And uh, it's just a fun, serious looking thing. I love it. If, you can, if that can great. be possible. Yeah, no, it, 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 a fun, serious thing. <laughs> Again, ju juxtaposition is the word of the nut. Oh, that's the crazy word. All right, moving on next to our other Hot Wheels designer, Matt Gabe. Matt, what do you got? Three, two, one, send it. All right, for my third pick, uh, number seven, the 1974 Ford Mercury Capri XSE. All right, um, there we go. It is the the loudest neutral colored car I've ever seen. Um, the you know just the exaggerated like the fins on the side, that whale tail. Even though if this were to go into production, we'd probably want to straighten that whale tail out a little bit so it's flat. Um, but just you know, it's loud. I think a kid would love it as a car. Yeah, yeah. All right, number two. Uh, Number two is number five, the 1969 Daytona Charger Superbird Scraptona. Um, I don't even need to say anything, just look at it. It's so, so cool, so fun. It's like just so much visual uh, stimulus. I love it. Yep, yep. All right, your number one pick, Mr. Matt Gabe. My number one copying Phil is number two, the 1941 GMC truck. Uh, All right. the just the look of it, the stance, that patina, like I just feel like that would look so cool shrunk down this this small. And I do want to get those keys and drive it. Well, he is in California, so it's very convenient for y'all. All right, moving right along. Thank you, Matt Gabe. Moving to Mr. Mark Vaughn, the librarian in service right now. <laughs> no need to be quiet. Mark Vaughn, your picks. Three, two, one. All right, number three uh, would be car number four, the uh, 07 ZM uh, Coupe, just because for a lot of reasons, there's there's so many cars that, there's so many builders that have done something like this, and they're just fun cars. That they're, they're, There was a, a girl at Toyota Fest a couple of weeks ago who had a Lexus LS400 that was I know the car. ridiculously overbuilt like an all-water. It's, it's fun, it's a, it's the kind of car. So that's, that's my choice uh, for number three. Uh, in uh, car number, uh, let's see, for, for, car, for my second choice, I'm going to have to go with car number 10, which would be the 69 VW Bug truck. Uh, I was debating whether to make that one or two, and uh, it, 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 it would be deserving as one, too, also, but uh, I just think they've really done something really clever with this, what has become, in Southern California at least, a whole genre of design around the Volkswagen Beetle and the things you can do to it. So kudos to them and then my uh number one choice car car number five i <laughs> will probably regret this on the walk but uh the 69 uh super uh the more you look at it the longer you look at it the more you fall in love with it it's like a girlfriend you know you shouldn't date 
<laughs> but you do anyway. And it's uh, intensely fun for very, very short periods. And then you're just in uh, therapy for the rest of your life. So I think this car could work as a Hot Wheel, especially for a way to keep that wing on. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's 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 been done before. I love the Deco. I think it's it's wild. It looks like a vehicle that I'd love to drive. And you definitely that thing does not have AC. And I think it's it's a sauna in that vehicle. You, you'd cut weight if you're a wrestler there. So, all right, moving on to uh, thank you so much, Mark Vaughn. Moving on to Daniel Pund, representing Road and Track, our media partner. Daniel Pund, the man of so many words, so just absolutely just busting out of the seams. Daniel Pund. Nope, I think you're muted. See, see, I, I, I still think he's, he's still, there. We are, there we are, <laughs> Daniel. There we go. I don't know what you said, but I was trying to avoid uh, having too many words for you there, Jared. But uh, so my third place, let's get right to it. My third place is number two, the 1941 GMC truck. Uh, no surprise, probably. Uh, I like sweet jumps. Uh, that'll do it. Um, it's it's awesome. Uh, my second choice is number five, the 1969 Scraptona. Because of all the things we've already said about it, it is spectacular, it is unique, it is dangerous and uncomfortable and loud and awesome. And he's my, 10 minutes down the road from you. It, correct, yeah. So I, I might actually be calling them. Uh, my first choice, though, uh, is number 10, the 1969 Volkswagen Beetle truck. Because it's just the most charming uh, and exciting and unique kind of little thing that uh, I have seen on any of these programs. I think it's great. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think I, I love the color of the cleanliness. It, it's very sterile. It's very well built. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more, Dan. This was a hard one. Uh, I'm just looking at all 10 of these vehicles. They are so different and so awesome in their in their own unique ways. It, it, it's, it bears repeating. So thank you. But uh, Colette. Finally, to you, what do we got? I'm, I'm really interested to hear oh. your three, two, one. It's hard. And you always know you can only choose three. You always choose only three. Fourth, I like, know. I won't no, throw three. an honorable mention this time. But uh, choose three. all right, let's go. Number three for me is car number five. That is a 69 Daytona Superbird, also known as Scraptona. One already has a brand, already has a name, Scraptona. And it looks like it's like pieces of scrap on the outside, but it's a monster engine on the inside and looks like it will perform really well. And for every other reason, everyone has mentioned. So that is my third pick. My second pick is car number one, the Nissan Silvia, because that is my kind of car aesthetically that just does it for me. Like I want that as a Hot Wheels myself. I think the build is very well executed. Um, and yeah, aesthetics matter when you're gonna be turned into a Hot Wheels diecast. So that is my number two. And my number one pick is car number seven, lucky number seven, and it's 74 Capri, because we got inspiration from Ferrari, from Porsche, we got louvers, we got lights, we got everything. Like I I can't believe I'm picking like a, a gray car. I think Matt said it too. This is like the loudest neutral palette car um ever i love it i love the garage spirit with it it takes me 45 years for the full build and its full transformation huge fan that's my number one pick i love it and, and we're just all over the board there from from just <laughs> uh, just my point of view it's so so all over the board yes sometimes everything is kind of resounding like that's the one not the case here not the case at all so i i love that and that's what it's all about just perception what what you make of the vehicles and i i think it's great and that's why hot wheels is the company that they are 50 plus years so so awesome all right well of course it wouldn't be the hot wheels legends tour without walmart thank you to walmart a partner since the beginning of legends tour if you're watching from us head to walmart.com slash hot wheels and if you're watching from canada go to walmart.ca and of course those nfts you can see that countdown going down right now those are being sold in just over four days and 14 hours so you're going to want go you're going to want to go to all to go into hotwheels.com but uh, again pick up your hot wheels die cast your hot wheels die cast at hotwheels.com and walmart.ca all right now time to celebrate our fellow hot wheels designer that left us too soon but left a lasting memory so i believe uh we have our hot wheels designers but uh 
any words, Matt and Phil, uh, about about Ryu Asada and the gentleman he was, the Ryu Asada Award, excellence in design and storytelling? Because uh, I, I do have a piece that I'd love to read about him. But uh, before I read it, I'd love for Matt or Phil. Please, Phil. So Ryu had been with us for quite a long time. He was an incredibly talented guy and a, a, uh, a, a incredibly nice guy. Uh, everybody loved Ryu. And um, we all miss him. And uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, Ryu, uh, Ryu yeah. Was, a, he was a champ. Um, one of my favorite people on the team. Actually, like I moved back to California a few years ago and he was one of the first people I texted. There was a Cars and Coffee and he was like, oh yeah, I'll be there. And he came over like a half hour later. So um, it was, you know, tragic that we lost him, uh, how we did. Um, but I'm super ha happy that we're doing this uh, award in his honor. Yeah, yeah, I think it's great. He was he was fantastic. He, uh, he was part of Hot Wheels Legends tour uh, last year a couple times. So I appreciate his involvement. And again, he, he left his fingerprint on us in so many ways. So thank you to Rio Asada, and that's why we created this, the Rio Asada Award for Excellence in Design and Storytelling. So in regards to Rio, you know we see so many great entries here at the Hot Wheels Legends tour builds that people have put their heart, soul, and time into creating. These are true works of passion that showcase their love of automotive design and storytelling. So in honor of Ryu Asada, our beloved member of the Hot Wheels design team, as uh, Phil and Matt so just, you know, lovingly said some words about him, uh, they wish Hot Wheels wishes to unveil a new award for this year's Legends Tour, the Ryu Asada Award for Excellence in Design and Storytelling. This award celebrates a vehicle that stood out to the team, not only as one that Rio would have loved because he built some wacky cars. He was a, definitely a Honda loyalist, but one that also tells a compelling story about the machine and the man or woman behind it. So without further further ado, the winner of the Rio Asada Award for Excellence in Design and Storytelling, uh, Phil and Matt, I believe you've scrutinized the vehicles and which of the 10 vehicles is the Rio Asada Award Excellence in Design and Storytelling? Which which vehicle is it? Phil, I'll so, let you do the honors. <laughs> okay, uh, that would be number eight, the 2019 Smart for Two Smart Runner. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I just I just think of Rio when I see this. He, he's done, he did, over his career, he did a lot of whimsical type cars. And uh, I think one, one of his later creations was the Carney Asada. Um, car. Um, so this this just has that that whimsical, uh, fun, uh, quirky feel about it. And as soon as I saw it, I thought of Rio. Yeah, it, and uh, and obviously Matt, you agree there. But a, a very cool vehicle as a very very awesome. So thank you so much. And I think it's a, it's a great honor to to honor honor him as well. So all right, well uh, thank you so much and congratulations there to the smart runner. This is your trophy, the Rio Asada Award, Excellence in Design and Storytelling. All right, you the fans voted, and uh, basically we are going down to our Mobile One fan favorite, and we are uh, we are taking a look. The fans voted, and you picked not this vehicle, but congratulations to two vehicles. We open up this round's Mobile One fan favorite vote. Let's take a peek. Uh, behind the build and hear the story of our first ever Mobile One fan favorite round winner, the 55 Pontiac Chieftain from its builder, round one's Mobile One fan favorite vote winner. All right, hello, my name is Ryan Upham and this is my 1962 Ford Falcon, AKA Project Falcon. And it's been a project uh, that I'm proud to say was done completely with friends and family. So the process was to convert it to a vintage-esque road race car. And that's where my race car comes into the picture. A lot of what we've learned from years on track, competing wheel to wheel, we've tried to implement into this car. Uh, so anything from you know, fitting the bigger tires, the all steel wide body, the suspension that actually works, a powertrain that we can beat on that's not gonna break. I mean, all of that, uh, was, was essential to a car that you can drive because if it's sitting, it's not, it's not cool. And to win overall, um, it would be a big deal just because I've been a lifelong you know, Hot Wheels collector, model car collector. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, we weren't in a position to have anything cool like this. Um, and it all started with collectible cars, right? Buying them, holding on to them, dreaming one day, 
getting to a point where I could work to have this stuff and then just continuing to push so that we can have a car like this, I can take it on the street and just have as much fun and get you know, new enthusiasts into it. Enthusiasts that don't know they're enthusiasts yet. And then continue to do stuff like this, go out on track and, and, and learn and, and build to create things like this. And there it is, the Mobile One fan favorite for winner for round one. But uh, Mobile One wants to continue. Just spread the love because, again, our friends at Mobile One are giving you a chance to win a Chevy Silverado 1500 Custom Trail Boss. Yeah, you get to win a full-size truck. So all you have to do is, again, text WIN to that number, 73876. Text WIN to 73876 or click the link in the chat to enter your info. No purchase necessary. LegendsTourSweeps.com. Why would you do it? Text WIN to 73876. All right, speaking of our Mobile One fan favorite, we are opening it up to you. It's time for the Mobile One fan vote. So go and vote on Hot Wheels IG stories now. I'm going to grab my phone because it is open. It's between two vehicles. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and almost drop my phone there. Good thing I got a case on it. But uh, the two vehicles are the 1941 GMC truck, which is that off-road vehicle, and the 1969 Volkswagen Bug. So if you're not on IG, go ahead and do that. At Hot Wheels Official, go into the stories. Go ahead. And, oh, there it is. All right, so I'm seeing this. I'm going to add it to my story, too, because I got tagged. Just let everybody know that we are watching this. Oh, Colette, do you, do you have one of the – are, are you voting right now? Top, oh, top or bottom, bug or truck? Colette? Oh, I think you're on mute. I think you're on mute. I, I think you're muted. I think you are muted there, Colette. But if, uh, if oh, you can chime, there back. you are. I'm back. There yeah, you are. So I didn't, the chat was going crazy for the truck. So I did an honorable vote and I voted for the truck because I didn't have a strong preference between the two. But that one sends it in the dunes. So I got to give him the vote. That is right. I think I think that's very kind of you, and normally you do kind of an honorable mention. So I guess that's your honorable mention. That is. Your your smile meter your smile meter was broken this event. You didn't. You, I mean, there was are it just? There too many good ones. There always okay. is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that, that makes sense. You're you're just perma smile. Perma smile. Exactly. That's what it's turned into. It's not the house of pre. It's the house of grin. <laughs> I like that. I like it. <laughs> All right. So uh, remember the NFT. You can see the clock going down right here, right here below me. The NFT going down three, the first ever one of one. That the Bone Crusher Hot Wheels, the Twin Mill Hot Wheels, and Diora 2 Hot Wheels. This is the trophy. And it's all about who is our Hot Wheels Legends Tour stop winner. Number three, our media partner, Road and Track. Thank you again so much. Again, Mobile One fan vote is now open. So go to Instagram, at Hot Wheels Official, in stories. It's open for 24 hours. It's open for 24 hours. But if you're watching, go and do it. I'll give you a moment. There you go. Go ahead, slide. Yep. Okay, there you go. All right. Again, the NFT is going down. Four days, 14 hours, six minutes, and we are here. Woo. All right. Let me get this. Let me get here. Here's, here's the envelope. Here it is. This is the gold envelope. The winner goes to the finals in November at a TBD, to be determined location. Your winner of round three of the Hot Wheels Legends Tour U.S. and Canada is the 1969 Daytona Charger. And that was car number five. There it is. Yeah. Round of applause from our judges, the Scrap Tona. I was leaning that way. If I was a judge, that's the way I was going to go. I like the Volkswagen Beetle truck as well, but I think this is a very interesting car. So you will join all the other Legends Tour finalists at the grand finale in November for a chance to have their car immortalized as an iconic Hot Wheels vehicle. Uh, Daniel, I mean, I, I, like you said, this was I think this was number two in your, in your roster. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I couldn't be more happy. It was a tough choice between the two. Um, I debated, so I, I think it's I think it's an awesome choice. Awesome, Matt. Matt Gabe, going to you. What do you think? I love it. I, it was also my number two, but now it is number one in my heart. So oh, super, super excited for it. That's awesome, Mark. Uh, your whole experience here being with us, Hot Wheels legends. What do you think? Uh, the whole experience. It's quite interesting. Uh, 
I got to get out of the mindset of looking at things as original cars and uh, look at them as not just customs, but like whole wild, crazy Hot Wheels creations. And uh, I think I'm uh, learning to do that better. But thanks for having me and good night. Oh, thank you so much, Mark. Uh, Phil, Phil Realman here. And I know you're getting ready for your vacation, man. You got a smile on your face and I love it. I, I feel like Mark signed off like, like he was the host. Are you going for my job, Mark? No, all joking. Phil. Oh, mute. The here. muted one, Phil. Phil, it's okay. Okay, here we go. I'll try again. Yeah, this is this is obviously a, an awesome choice. Um, it, it, this was a tough one. It had been easier to pick a top six. Um, but this this is a very cool car. I've been accused of being a Mopar guy, so I'm, I'm obviously in. So very cool choice. Yeah, yeah. And, and obviously, finally, Colette, and that's going to be a great segue because you are giving away one more of the 1983 Chevy Silverado. So you're giving away another die cast, but uh, overall the cars, this, the, the collection here, it's really hard to pick one. It's so diverse every time that it just like throws your mind for a loop, but I'm stoked. Congrats to Scraptona. It was in my top three, so I'm a happy girl and congrats to them. So now that we've announced our winner, like we promised, I have one more giveaway for you guys and one lucky fan is going to get the exclusive 1983 chevy silverado all you guys gotta do is be ready be ready on on the keys in the chat on the legends live stream on the hot wheels facebook page and you just have to answer one question that is it just one i need you guys to tell me in the chat how old you were when you got your very first hot wheels what age were you let us know right now in the chat and you might win the exclusive 1983 Chevy Silverado. So I'm waiting to see some answers here. Uh, well, just uh, I'm going to converse with you while while they're typing in years and all that. How old? How old were you? Can you can you recall? I feel like maybe 6 or 7. Yeah. I don't remember like a lot of my childhood. I find it amazing when people are like, oh, I remember this when I was three years old. That's impeccable memory. Uh, but I, I'd say like around six or seven. I think the youngest so far. Oh, well, someone is answering for their son. It says their son got their first Hot Wheels when they were two years old. We got eight years old and it was 1978 from David Coria. That's that is some good memory right there. So Mark says he was three years old in 1968. So we got nine years old. Oh my gosh. All right. ages are all over the place. I love it. And that's just the diversity, right? You just, from, from one to 101, right? Just absolute Hot Wheels fans of all ages. And that's, that's really what Hot Wheels Legends is about, is, is celebrating the culture. You know, over, over 25,000, you know, 250,000 die casts being made. Just the, the numbers are staggering. This is about, you know, being immortalized as a Hot Wheels die cast. It's just an awesome celebration of automotive culture and just being a child at heart. And now I'm excited. That was so much fun, Hot Wheels Unleashed. I, I, I'm excited about that game. It looks fun. I'm going to go to hotwheelsunleashed.com. I can't believe I haven't done it. I'm going to do it tomorrow and uh, and pre-order it. But uh, do you have do you have an age yet? Do you I have do. A I do. We have a winner. And our winner is Trisha Williams. And she got her first Hot Wheels at seven years old. Lucky number seven. So congrats to Trisha. Look out for a message from one of our team and you will be receiving your exclusive Silverado. So congrats. There it is. So Trisha, congratulations. Now, uh, don't know how old you are now, but Trisha, now you received this uh, 83 Chevy Silverado, which I absolutely love. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you to our judges. Thank you to Phil. Thank you to Matt. Thank you to Mark. Thank you to Daniel. Thank you to all of you tuning in. Again, congratulations to Christopher Palmer from Macomb, Michigan, the driver of the one, the only Scraptona. You are now entered. You will join the other finalists. Again, vote. Mobile One Fan Vote is open on IG Stories. Thank you so much. Be sure to follow all of us at Hot Wheels Official on IG and Facebook to learn more and the NFTs. You could see the clock counting down in four days. Only three of them. One of one. First ever. Hot Wheels making history. Oh, thank you, Matt. I appreciate the assist here. <laughs> but I'm gonna pass that. I'm gonna pass that point down. Down to you. There it is. Oh, look at look at Mark with. It. Oh, nice. Well played. All right. That's, that's teamwork right there.
Thank you guys and gals so much. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Hot Wheels Official for all things Hot Wheels, all things Hot Wheels Legends. On behalf of the whole team, I'm Jared DeAnder. We'll see you online. We'll see you another time. Send it! Hot Wheels Legends Tour.